Hello students how are you doing I hope all of you are doing really well So in today's class we are going to study the chapter Ishwaran the storyteller which is written by R K Lakshman R K Lakshman was born on 24th October 1921 and died on 26th January 2015 Arke Lakshman was a very famous storyteller and a cartoonist. He drew sketches for one of the most famous serial in India, which is Malguri Days. So we begin the story from here. One night, Mahendra woke up from his sleep and saw a dark, cloudy form. He broke out into a cold sweat. Was it a ghost? So in this story we are going to know about a man named Mahendra. So what happens? He woke up from his sleep and he saw a dark cloudy form and he broke out into a cold sweat. So he was not sure what did he see right now? Was it a ghost? So we will find out the answer of this question in this chapter. Okay? Now let's begin. The story was narrated to Ganesh by a young man Mahendra by name. So the story is be was being narrated to Ganesh by a young man Mahendra. Mahendra, okay, we are talking about Mahendra. He was a junior supervisor in a firm which offered on hire supervisors at various types of construction sites. like factories bridges dams and so on so mahendra's job was to keep an eye on the activities at the work site so like i told you he was a supervisor so the job of a supervisor is to keep an eye which means to supervise what are the activities which are going on at the work site He had to keep moving from place to place every now and then as ordered by his head office. So there was no one fixed place of his working. Mahendra whenever he got order from his head office he has to keep moving from one place to the other place. From a coal mining area to a railway bridge construction site from there after a few months to a chemical plant which was coming up somewhere so from these lines we come to know that from where to which place he has to go from a railway bridge construction site to a chemical plant which was going to come up in some place so these are the places where he used to work maybe in a coal mine or a bridge construction site or a chemical plant he was a bachelor his needs were simple and he was able to adjust himself to all kinds of odd conditions so he was a bachelor which means he was not married okay he was single and therefore his needs were very simple he did not have any fancy demands and no matter how odd condition you give him he was very adjustable in nature he will adjust in whatsoever odd conditions whether it was an ill equipped circuit house or a makeshift canvas tent in the middle of a stone quarry so no matter in what condition you ask him to live whether it is a poor equipped circuit house or just a temporary canvas tent in the middle of a stone quarry quarry means mine okay okay so you can see the picture okay the first picture is a makeshift canvas tent which you must have seen in books or movies where people spend nights okay under this kind of tent so like i told you he was very simple his needs were very simple and he used to adjust to all kinds of situations so he can easily live here without complaining 
but one asset he had was his cook, Ishwaran. The cook was quite attached to Mahindra and followed him uncomplainingly wherever he was posted. So, we are talking about Ishwaran now. Okay, Ishwaran, the storyteller, from where he gets his name. So, he was like an asset to Mahindra. He was his cook. And cook was really attached to Mahindra and he used to follow him to all the places wherever he was posted. He cooked for Mahindra, washed his clothes and chatted away with his master at night. He could weave out endless stories and anecdotes on varied subjects. Anecdotes means some short interesting story about a real incident. So, as the name suggests, Ishwaran, the storyteller, we could know one characteristics of Ishwaran, that he was a very good storyteller. He will tell you so many stories that you will never be bored of his stories. Okay, he could weave out endless stories, means never ending stories and anecdotes on varied subjects. Okay. Ishwaran also had an amazing capacity to produce vegetables and cooking in ingredients seemingly out of nowhere in the middle of a desolate landscape with no shops visible for miles around. So talking about Ishwaran, he had a very good uh, you know, uh, characteristics of telling stories. But on addition to it, he was also a very good, you know, uh, he had a capacity to produce vegetables and cooking in ingredients where there were no shops available, okay, in the middle of desolate landscape. Desolate means isolated, okay, very um, uh, um, lonely. And there would be no shops available for miles around. But he could produce vegetables and ingredients out of nowhere. He would miraculously conjure up the most delicious dishes made with fresh vegetables. He would miraculously conjure. Conjure means to create by magic. Okay. So he had that magic with him that he used to make very good dishes, very delicious dishes with fresh vegetables. Within an hour of arriving at the zinc sheet shelter at the new workplace. So whenever Mahindra and Ishwaran, they have to move from places to places, right? But within an hour, he will make a very good, delicious dish. Okay, and that too magically. So this was a characteristics of Ishwaran. Mahindra would be up early in the morning and leave for work after breakfast, carrying some prepared food with him. Meanwhile, Ishwaran would tidy up the shed, wash the clothes and have a leisurely bath, pouring several buckets of water over his head, muttering a prayer all the while. So when Ishwaran, uh, sorry, when Mahesh, Mahendra went for his work, taking all his uh, prepared food with him and having uh, breakfast, what would Ishwaran do? He used to tidy up the shed, wash the clothes and take a very leisurely bath, pouring several buckets of water over his head. And what he did meanwhile, he was also muttering a prayer. Okay, muttering maybe like whispering a prayer all the while. It would be lunchtime by then. After eating, he would read for a while before dozing off. Dozing off means before sleeping. So he has a habit of reading. The book was usually some popular Tamil thriller running to hundreds of pages. So what kind of books did he read? He used to read some popular Tamil thriller, which was really huge, you know, bulky books, hundreds of pages. Its imaginative descriptions and narrative flourishes would hold Ishwaran in thrall. So uh, narrative flourishes means detailed descriptions. So the book used to hold him in thrall. The word thrall means a state of being in someone's power or complete absorption. 
or captivated. So he used to be so much into the book. He was so much captivated into the story that he used to be in, in a state of thrall. His own descriptions were greatly influenced by the Tamil authors that he read. When he was narrating even the smallest of incidents, he would try to work in suspense and a surprise ending into the account. So, whenever he used to tell stories, okay, he, it was a little bit inspired by the Tamil authors because he had a habit to read Tamil uh, books. So, his own descriptions were also influenced by those books. And whenever he was narrating even the smallest of incidents, you try to work in suspense and surprise into the account. So, like that is a very important point, right? So, a good storyteller should always um, try to include suspense and surprise into their story. Then only the readers will be interested to read or interested to listen to them, isn't it? Otherwise, they would be bored. For example, instead of saying that he had come across an uprooted tree on the highway, he would say, the road was deserted and I was all alone. Suddenly, I spotted something that looked like an enormous bushy beast lying sprawled across the road. So, like, it's a very small thing to say, right, that he had come across an uprooted tree on the highway. But he would not keep it straight. He will not say that, oh, I have uh, seen an uprooted tree on the highway. He will try to, you know, make it more interesting. And he would say that the road was deserted. Deserted means all alone. There was no one. And I was also all alone. Suddenly, I spotted something that looked like an enormous bushy beast lying sprawled across the road. So this is one way of saying things. Okay way of keeping your uh, listeners engaged so sprawl means spread out over a large area in irregular way i was half inclined to turn and go back but as i came closer i saw that it was a fallen tree with its dry branches spread out so he'd finally conclude and say that i was half inclined to turn and go back means i was almost about to go back but as he came closer what he saw that it was a fallen tree with its dry branches spread out so it is not a big deal it's just a normal tree falling on the highway but Ishwaran would make it seem so big and so you know uh, interesting that the listeners would be thralled Mahindra would stretch himself back in his canvas chair and listen to Ishwaran's tales uncritically so, whenever Ishwaran uh, uh, told stories to Mahindra, he would never judge them. He would listen to them uncritically, means without judging. Not asking how it is possible or are you, are you even lying to me? Are you lying to me? No, he never judged him. He just enjoyed his stories. The place I come from is famous for timber. Timber is a wood prepared for use in building and carpentry. Ishwaran would begin. So, Ishwaran has started to tell a story. And he begins, The place I come from is famous for timber. There is a richly wooded forest all around. The logs are hauled on the, onto the lorries by elephants. So, lorries are those kind of large heavy motor vehicles for used for transporting goods. There are huge, well-fed beasts. When they turn wild, even the most experienced Mahut is not able to control them. So, Mahut is a person who works with and controls elephant. So, he is saying that in my village, there are very huge, well-fed beasts. So, he is referring to elephants. Because they are so huge, they are so scary that he is, they have been compared to beasts. Okay. And Ishwaran says that when the elephants go wild, 
when they turn wild, when they go mad. Even the most experienced Mahut is not able to control them. <coughs> After this prologue, Ishwaran would launch into an elaborate anecdote involving an elephant. Prologue means introductory section of a speech. So like before starting a story, you tell a prologue, you give a background, right? So after this prologue, Ishwaran would launch into an elaborate, means very much uh, explained, deeply explained anecdote involving an elephant. So he has begun telling a story of elephant. One day, a tusker escaped from the timber yard and began to roam about, stamping. Stamping means crush or flatten with a heavy blow from one's foot. So if you have seen an elephant, you might be uh, knowing that they just uh, crush or they flatten heavy things which are on the, which comes on their way with their foot. So one day a tusker escaped from the timber yard. Tusker is elephant. Okay. So the elephant had escaped from the timber yard and he began to roam about. Roam about means just going here and there. So he stamped. Uh, he stamped on bushes, tearing up wild creepers and breaking branches at will. So we know that he has started to destroy things. He was stamping on bushes. He was tearing up creepers and breaking branches at will. Will is his wish, the elephant's wish. So you can see that the elephant is causing destruction, isn't it? You know, sir, how an elephant behaves when it goes mad? Ishwaran would get so caught up in the excitement of his own story that he would get up from the floor and jump up out, stamping his feet in emulation of the mad elephant. So when he was telling the story, he would ask Mahindra, that do you know, sir, how an elephant behaves when it goes mad? And the Ish Ishwara would be so excited in his own story that he used to get up from the floor and start to jump and stamp uh, his own feet, okay, in emulation of the, emulation is imitation, when you try to copy someone. Okay, so here definitely Ishwin was trying to copy the elephant and how he was stamping. So here I have written the meaning of emulation is the effort to match or surpass a person or achievement typically by imitation. Okay, so like uh, if you're trying to copy someone or you're trying, you're making an effort to match what a person is doing. Okay. The elephant reached the outskirts of our town, breaking the fences down like matchsticks. So the elephant had now reached the outskirts of the town and he was breaking the fences as if they were just matchsticks to him. It, it was so easy to bring the fences down like he was just doing with the matchsticks. He would continue. It came into the main road and smashed all the stalls, selling fruits, mud pots and clothes. So the Ishwaran is now telling us that how the elephant was creating a destruction. It has come to the main road and he was smashing all the stalls which were selling fruits and mud pots and clothes. So all these things were being da were, uh, caused damage. As you can see in this picture, that how the elephant had gone mad, it has come to the main road and destroying everything which is coming on, on his way. People ran helter-skelter. In panic, the elephant now entered a school ground where children were playing, breaking through the brick wall. So when these things started to happen, when elephant had started to uh, dis uh, destroy things, people started to panic and they ran helter-skelter. Helter-skelter means here and there, in disorderly haste or confusion. Now elephant had entered a school now, okay, school ground. So obviously there was a school, so children were playing in the playground. Like when you go to school, you also play in your playground. So similarly, in that school, 
where elephant has entered children were playing and how did elephant enter the school breaking through the brick wall so he broke the brick wall and then he entered the school all the boys ran into the classrooms and shut the doors tight the beast grunted and wandered about pulling out the football goal post tearing down the volleyball net kicking and flattening the drum cap for water and uprooting the shrubs so as soon as the boys saw that elephant has entered into their ground all of them ran into their classrooms and they shut their doors tight the beast beast means the elephant grunted okay grunted is making a loud sound and wandered means roamed about and what are the destructions that he was doing he was pulling out the football goal post tearing down the volleyball net kicking and flattening the drum which was there kept for water and uprooting the shrubs so all these things were done by the elephant okay meanwhile all the teachers had climbed up to the terrace of the school building from there they helplessly watched the depredations of the elephant so all the teachers they also did not know what to do at the at the moment so they so they climbed up to the terrace of the school building and they helplessly helplessly means they wanted to help they wanted to do something about the situation but they were helpless they, they did not know what to do at that moment they just watched the depredations which were done by the elephant depredation means the attacks which are made to destroy the something there was not a soul below on the ground the streets were empty as if the inhabitants of the entire town had suddenly disappeared so ishwar in saying that not a single soul okay soul means a person okay not a single person could be seen on the ground below the streets had become empty as if the inhabitants the people staying there they have disappeared so basically what happened all of them were scared of the elephant so they locked themselves into their houses so you can see that's a picture which you can see that you know, not a single person could be seen here i was studying in the junior class at that time and was watching the whole drama from the rooftop i don't know what came over me suddenly i grabbed a cane from the hands of one of the teachers and ran down the stairs and into the open so now ishwaran saying that i was studying in the junior class so ishwaran was in the junior class at that time and he was along with students along with teachers he was also watching the whole drama from the rooftop drama why drama because maybe he thought that uh, elephant is just uh, doing some kind of drama okay i don't know what came over me suddenly he is saying that i don't know what happened to me okay what did he do he just grabbed a cane from the hands of one of the teachers and he ran down the stairs into the open so he went to the ground where the elephant was present the elephant grunted and menacingly swung a branch of a tree which it which it held in its trunk so the elephant grunted okay he made a very loud sound and menacingly means suggesting the presence of danger okay what did he do he swung a branch of a tree which it held in its trunk so he was holding a branch of a tree which he swung angrily showing that it's a sign of a danger it stamped its feet kicking up a lot of mud and dust so you know uh, the elephant's feet are very heavy so when he stamped it on the floor or on the ground it Uh, a lot of mud and dust were around him okay it looked frightening but i moved slowly towards it stick in hand 
people were watching the scene hypnotized from nearby house tops so ishwaran is saying that the um, the scene was really frightening it was scary that how elephant is grunting and you know showing the sign of danger stamping its feet on the ground it was really frightening but i did not get got scared i i was you know i was moving slowly towards it still the stick in my hand remember the the cane that he has taken from one of his teachers so he was moving towards the elephant he was so he was daring enough to do that people were watching the scene hypnotized they were totally you know uh, with rapt attention they were looking at this scene from nearby house tops so the people they have went up on their house tops to see the what is being done by the elephant the elephant looked at me red eyed ready to rush towards me it lifted its trunk and trumped it so the elephant looked at me red eyed so elephant looked at whom ishwaran red eyed red eyed means when do your uh, when is your eyes red huh when you are angry yes so you have seen generally people who are ang angry their eyes turn red so the elephant was really angry and he was rushing towards the towards ishwaran it lifted its trunk and trumped it trumped it means he made a sound like an elephant's make okay at that moment i moved forward and must must string all my force whacked its third toenail on the quick the beast looked stunned for a moment then it shivered from head to foot and collapsed so he is saying that at that moment he moved forward mustering all my force mustering means gathering gathering all his force he whacked whack means to hit noisily its third toe nail okay on the quick means without even spending a single minute he just whacked his third toe nail the beast the elephant looked stunned like he was confused at what's going on he looked stunned for a moment and then shivered and then finally collapsed so the ishwaran is trying to say that how he was able to control the beast and finally made him collapse on the ground so it's he was really proud of himself ishwaran that i was in the junior class so maybe he was in class uh, maybe in 4 or 5 okay but still he was able to control that giant beast and he made him collapse on the ground at this point ishwaran would leave the story unfinished and get up mumbling okay i will be back after lighting the gas and warming up the dinner so he did not finish the story here okay rather he just got up from his place and he said okay i'll be back in some time i'll just light the gas i'll warm the dinner so students we will study till here in this class and we will know how was ishwaran able to bring down that huge beast okay he was such a small kid and he was when all other people were scared of the elephant they went on their rooftop but still he was not scared he mustered all his courage and he confronted the elephant so we'll know in the next class how did he do that okay and i hope all of you have found the story interesting and before ending the class we will discuss some of the question answers first question is what was the profession of mahendra how he would move about different places for his work so i told you in the very beginning of the chapter that mahendra was a junior supervisor in a firm that offered to hire supervisors at various types of construction sites his job was to keep an eye on the activities at the work site mahindra had to keep moving from place to place coal mining area to a railway bridge construction site to a chemical plant which was coming up somewhere okay next question 
discuss about the adaptability of Mahindra at, dis at different places. Mahindra's needs were simple. He was able to adjust himself to all kinds of odd conditions. Whether it was an ill-equipped circuit house or a makeshift canvas tent in the middle of a stone quarry. So I have told you in the beginning that he was a bachelor. He, his needs were very simple and he was very adjusting in nature. Okay. Third question. How was Ishwaran an asset for Mahindra? What work would he do for Mahindra? So you know Ishwaran was Mahindra's cook. He was very caring and hardworking. He went with his master to whichever place he was posted. And that too uncomplainingly, yes? Do you remember? Hmm. Ishwaran cooked for Mahindra, washed his clothes and chatted away with his master at night. Okay. Next question. What does Ishwaran do every day? So basically you have to tell about his daily routine. So do you remember? Yes. Ishwaran would tidy up the shed, wash their clothes and have a leisurely bath, pouring several buckets of water over his head, muttering a prayer all the while. By then, it would be lunchtime. After eating, he would read for a while before dozing off. The book that he used to read was usually some popular Tamil thriller running to hundreds of pages. So basically this was his daily routine and more or less he did the same thing apart from uh, making uh, lunch for uh, lunch and dinner for uh, Mahindra packing his breakfast so th these are the things that he did what happened when the wild elephant entered the school playground when the wild elephant entered the school playground there was chaos which means there was confusion Okay, the boys ran into their classrooms and shut the doors. The elephant pulled out the football goal post, flattened the drum and uprooted the shrubs. So I told you, isn't it, that the elephant was causing destruction. So uh, we will discuss the next part of the chapter in the next class. Okay, and we'll find out the trick by which um, Ishwaran was able to bring down the beast. So students, I hope you have understood the chapter till here and you have enjoyed it. Okay, so we will meet in the next class. Till then, bye and take care.